Mega Praise Ministries. We're out to reach the lost, to bring the lost sheep back home, to build a relationship between God and man, for the worship, the presence, the healing, the restoring. That's what it's about, the restoring of the homes, the restoring of the families, the healing of the bodies, to enjoy the, a relationship with the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. We love the worship. We love the outpouring of the presence of God. This is what this ministry is all about, Mega Praise Ministries, to see what that was that was lost. I'm Shiva Johnson, your host for this edition of Only the Truth. It is such a privilege to be able to come into your homes and minister the Word of God. In this program, I would like to discuss with you prevailing prayer. What is prevailing prayer? What kind of prayer would pierce the spirit realm, remove the hindrances, and bring you back the answer. Many Christians have been praying for their requests for a long time, but not to much avail. And I'm not referring to situations when your request is not in God's will or it's not his timing yet. I'm referring to situations when you know it's God's will and you know it's his, it's his timing actually overdue and yet your prayers are not prevailing. So what are the missing ingredients to our prayers? That's the discussion of this program. How can we pray effective prevailing prayers? I'm going to read for you from Philippians 4.19. My God shall supply all your need according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. So everything we need already exists in the glory realm, in the glory. But the catch is that it exists in a spiritual form, not a physical form. And it takes a prevailing prayer to materialize the spiritual form and make it manifest in the natural. Amen. So in order for our prayers to be prevailing and to receive what we need from the glory, we need to communicate with the glory in the language that it understands. It's like, because the Bible, what does the Bible say? The Bible says, ask and you shall receive. But you need to ask in the language that the glory understands and responds to. For example, when you give a voice command or a written command to a computer, there is a software in the computer that translates your language into the computer language, which is zeros and ones. And then the computer responds to you. Otherwise, the computer would have no clue what you're saying because it does not understand your language. In the same way, you need to ask in your prayers in the language that the glory understands. Do you know what language that is? It's the wave language. Because remember, the, la the glory of God is waves of magnificent energy and light and frequency and, and sound emanating from God. So the glory is all, all these waves of magnificent energy. So to communicate with the glory, you also need to ask in the wave language. I'm sure you're now puzzled thinking, how on earth am I to go to speak in the wave language? Well, Lucky for you, God already put the prayer technology inside of you. You see, our thoughts and our emotions are transmitted in our body from one neuron to the next in the form 
of electricity, electric impulses. And we know from physics that wherever there is electricity, there's also waves of electromagnetic waves around, like an electromagnetic um, field formed. So you are actually, according to your thoughts and emotions, emitting waves, electromagnetic waves. And these waves is what the glory picks up on and understands. And we think it's our verbal prayer that was answered, but it was actually the waves that we emit during prayer that the glory responds to. Amen? This is science, okay? This is not new age like some people would think. The new age religion has actually used this science, which is quantum physics, and it's the science of the spirit realm, but science belongs to God, and anybody can use God's laws and benefit from them, right? Like anybody can sow a seed into the ground and grow a tree and benefit the, from the fruits. So anybody can use the laws of God and benefit from them, even an atheist, even the New Age religion, or any other person who doesn't even believe in God. So this is how the prayer technology works. When you focus your mind and your heart on your prayer request, the waves generated by your thoughts and emotions will be automatically of the same wavelength as the spiritual form of your request that already exists in the glory and will resonate with that and then cause it to materialize and form into its natural form, its physical form. And that's how we receive from the glory. Amen? Hebrews 11.3 says, We also know that what can be seen was made out of what cannot be seen. So the physical forms that you see were made from the spiritual forms. This is exactly the creative technology that God used to create the universe. God spoke things into existence, according to Genesis. But not merely speaking by verbal language, but by his thoughts and emotions. Because in the spirit realm, we communicate through our thoughts and our emotions. Verbal communication is actually the lowest form of communication. That's why there are so many misunderstandings when it comes to verbal communication. So made in the image of God, the same creative technology was placed in us. Even an atheist, for example, can use this creative technology to receive blessings from the glory. This is why there are optimistic people who may not even believe in God, who, can, who receive more blessings than pessimistic Christians. Because the frequency of negative emotions get you out of tune with the glory. If you, for example, have all these negative emotions, emotions of rejection, fear, worry, uh, and whatnot, then you get your, the waves that are generated by these, by these uh, negative emotions tune you out of the glory. So you won't be able to receive from the glory. This is exactly like if you tune your radio set to the wrong frequency, then you won't receive from the radio station um, that you desire to receive from because you are out of tune. In the same way, negative emotions such as depression, lust, envy, jealousy, unbelief, doubt, they tune you out of the glory and they cause so much static and hindrance in receiving blessings from the glory. So you can pray for something for so long, but if these negative emotions, these negative waves, the, the wrong frequencies are in the way, they cause static, and you won't be able to receive from the, from the glory realm. Amen? So when you focus your mind on your prayer request, as I said, you automatically 
generate waves, your thoughts, generate waves that are of the same wavelength as the spiritual form of your prayer request in the glory and resonate with it, cause it to materialize and turn into its physical form. Isn't that amazing? So that's why focused prayer is very important. You can't just rehearse prayers. I've seen people who go through a list of prayer and just rehearse them quickly, and they think they're done for their you know, prayer session, or whatever they call it. But this is not going to be a prevailing prayer, because their mind wasn't focused on their prayer request. Five minutes of focused prayer is better than three hours of unfocused prayer, when your mind is just wandering off to other things. For example, I know people who would say, OK, I'm going to pray in tongues, for those of you who have the gift, for 30 minutes for, for example, my daughter to be saved for the salvation of my daughter. And then while they're speaking in tongues, praying in tongues for 30 minutes, their mind has wandered off to other things. This is not going to be a prevailing prayer. Your mind needs to be, your thoughts need to be focused on your prayer request so you can tune to that section of the glory that you are looking for. Amen? Otherwise. This person uh, is praying in tongues for 30 minutes. She could be praying for a missionary in China, thinking she's praying for the salvation of her mother, uh, her, of her daughter. So focused prayer is very important for a prayer to be prevailing. Also, you can only prevail for one thing at a time. You can have a list of prayer because you can't focus on 10 things at the same time. You have to focus your mind and your heart on one thing at a time for your prayer to be prevailing. Amen? I know pre uh, businesses who actually would hire prayer intercessors, and I understand that prayer is for free. We, un we totally understand that. But they know that this prayer intercessor, if she has to worry about uh, paying bills and going to work, then she won't be able to do focused prayer, concentrated prayers for their business. So they are willing to pay, uh, which is to take care of their means so they can do focused prayers for the business. And they actually see the business prospering. And when they stop, um, you know, that person from praying, the, the business doesn't prosper as much as before. So there is a direct connection. Amen? Also, one more thing that is very important for a prayer to be effective is our emotions have to be involved. I'm going to read for you from James 5.16. It says, The effective, fervent prayers of a righteous man availeth much. Notice it says the effective, fervent prayer will avail much. You know what fervent means? According to the dictionary, fervent means passionate, intense, heartfelt, deeply felt, emotional, animated, hot, burning. Is this how we pray? Because that's an important ingredient for a prayer to be prevailing. It has to be emotional, too. And I'm referring to positive emotions, not negative emotions like jealousy, envy, depression. I'm talking about positive emotions, such as compassion. For example, I heard this testimony of this husband and wife who were caught in a blizzard. And they were dying because there were, there were no cars around, and they, they, their car broke down. There was no one to help them. And all of a sudden, the, the husband looked in the eyes of his wife, and he saw the look of death on her face. 
And what he saw moved him to such compassion that he got out of the car and prayed such a prayer of compassion that instantly a portal to heaven opened or a portal to the glory opened and his, their car miraculously started working again and they were delivered from their situation. I'm sure you also heard of revivals being birthed out of a group of people gathering and praying with such heart burning compassion and passion for a revival. It's one thing to say, Lord, save the souls. It's another thing to be hot burning in your heart for a revival for the souls and pray with passion and compassion for the uh, lost souls. This is what makes a prayer prevailing. Amen. Also, alignment is very important. Alignment between your thoughts and your emotions. Okay? If, say, you are praying for financial blessing, okay? You're praying for riches. But, so, so you actually focus your mind on riches. But you feel poor due to your past experiences, perhaps. Now there is a conflict between your thoughts and your emotions, your mind and your heart. So the waves generated by your thoughts will be in conflict with the waves generated by your heart. So if they're in conflict with each other, then you're not tuned to the right frequency, to the right wavelength of riches in the glory realm. So your prayer will not prevail. Amen? So alignment is very, very important. Alignment between your thoughts and your emotions. Hallelujah. At this point, I'm going to stop and ask our engineer to show the clip of this ministry that we are partnering with. During the Sudanese Civil War, Islamic militias raided the Christian-majority villages of southern Sudan, wreaking death and destruction. Hundreds of thousands were kidnapped and taken into slavery, torn away from their families, forced to convert to Islam, and subjected to untold horrors. Today, tens of thousands are still enslaved, but there is hope. Since 1995, Christian Solidarity International has liberated over 100,000 of these who have been enslaved, bringing them home, reuniting them with their families. We need your help to bring those left home. $250 will free one person from slavery and provide them with a survival kit. Basic items like food, shelter, a goat, and fishing supplies. Please. Help us bring freedom for South Sudanese Christians and other minorities by giving generously. $250 frees one person. $500 frees two people. $1,000 frees four people. We won't stop until everyone has been freed. Join us. consider assisting us and helping us with this ministry because the Bible wants us to set the captives free and the, you know Paul talks about how we can talk about we can say okay we'll pray for you but if you can give and help someone and you don't do it that that's not what God is looking for yes we do pray but we also need to help what we can financially amen so if you would just partner with us, in, and, and actually the, the walk is called the Freedom Walk. These people who go and save the, the captives, and they pay the $250 to the master, because the master that way can um, have more cattle 
and in that in that community, having more cattle is it just gives you more respect, more goats, more more animals, and uh, so he actually pays a master, purchases them, just as Jesus purchased us from the devil, and he walks. He actually walks them back to their village, and he puts them in the home, um, safe home. Amen. Hallelujah. So please partner with us in this. So going back to prevailing prayer. Like I said, our thoughts and emotions need to be aligned. So don't just say a prayer, okay? But think a prayer. And, and, and feel a prayer. And the more intense you think it, and the more strongly you feel it, the more effective and prevailing your prayer shall be. So a lot of prayers that we pray are not prevailing prayers. For example, John Finney, who, is, uh, who was a very famous evangelist, he once um, attended this, uh, actually before he was even saved, he was attending a Bible study, a, a home Bible study. And the people at the Bible study, you know, the Christians, they were, they were praying for things um, from time to time. And then one day they asked John Finney, um, Charles Finney, would you like us to pray for you? Is there any request that you have? And you know what he answered? He said, no, thank you. I have yet to see a prayer of yours to be answered. So obviously, this group were not a passionate praying group. So their prayers were not prevailing prayers, and they were not effective prayers, and they were not being a good testimony to this non-believer. So after Charles Finney became a believer, then he learned the difference between prevailing prayer and just a non-prevailing prayer. So we just need to be focused, like I said, focus our mind on what we are praying for, and focus our heart. And we have to feel strongly about what we're praying for. And this is actually one way that God divides um, the responsibility of praying for different things among the body of Christ by giving different uh, believers different burdens. Okay, so what you have burden for, you feel strongly about, that's what you can pray a pray a prevailing prayer for so if you if you pray for everything and everyone it's not really going to be a prevailing prayer and i know the body of christ can make you feel guilty for not praying for everything and everyone but this is really not going to be a prevailing prayer if you just pray for things that god didn't give you the burden for because when you have a burden for something you can pray, pray, uh, pray passionately. You can get, you know, your emotions get involved and your focus, your mind is focused when you're praying. Your mind is not uh, wandering off to other things when you are passionate about something. So don't let people make you feel guilty and, you know, emailing you different prayer requests all the time and you just feel so overwhelmed and, and you feel guilty if you don't pray for it. Just remember, say, Remember, what God has given you burden for, that's your responsibility to pray for or pray for the most. You know, you can pray for other people too, but you want to focus on what you have burden for, you have passion for, because that's where you can make a difference. Hallelujah. So, by the way, I wrote this book, The Magnetism of Prayer, which explains everything that... Um, I taught you today, I talked to you about today, and goes into more details. And it's a booklet, so you can, it's a, like a pocket book. You can put it in your pocket or your purse and carry it with you as a reminder of how to pray prevailing prayers, effective prayers. Amen. So for a gift of any amount, I will send you this, the magnetism of prayer. Hallelujah. 
Now I want you to, if you if you're not saved, if if like I said, you know, you can even not be saved and pray prevailing prayers by the prayer technology that God has put in every human being. But the Bible says, what good is it if a man wins the whole world, gain the whole world, but loses his own soul? So, you know, it's one thing to receive from the glory because uh, you know how to pray prevailing prayers, but it's another thing for you to have eternal life, to have salvation of soul. Hallelujah. So if you're not saved, pray this with me. Lord Jesus, I come to you today just as I am. I pray that you would receive me today just as I am. In Jesus' name, I pray and I repent from my, my old life, from my sins. And I ask you to give me a new life, a new beginning, and give me eternal life. I apply the blood of Jesus to all my sins of past. So I, I don't feel guilty anymore. I know that I am forgiven. I know that God has accepted me. And I know that I have a destiny and a future with him. Hallelujah. So just remember to walk with God and talk with God. You know, just as if he's your friend. He is your friend. Just like you talk to your friends, talk with God. Throughout the day, you will feel so much more at peace and you will be so relieved. Hallelujah. So I'm going to just leave you with this thought. And I ask God to be with you and to bless you. Until the next time. Hallelujah. See you next time. Amen.